Kinzer. I'm a microscope dentist based out of Seattle, Washington, and I've been practicing using a microscope for almost 20 years. Today I'm going to go through with you the initial setup of the diopters for a dental operating microscope. Using a microscope in practice is can be very challenging due to the learning curve, and part of that is just because of this idea of looking through binoculars while you're working on a patient. Uh, setting up the diopters and the, this binocular uh, co complex correctly from the beginning is going to definitely ease that curve and make it a little bit less painful as you move towards using this. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started and I'm gonna power up the microscope. So my power button is up here. I'm gonna turn it on and you can hear it getting started. So one thing as you're setting it up is you wanna pay attention to these friction knobs on the suspension arms and you wanna tighten them down enough so that this this arm and this scope is not in the yoke here, is not all moving while you're setting this up. You want it to be pretty still and stable. So I have them tightened up enough that there's not going to be any drifting. I would never recommend setting this up over a patient to begin with. You would always do it outside of a patient's mouth on a, a flat tabletop. So I've just taken a flat panel here and set it over my operating chair at what is a comfortable working height for me. When you start, you're going to go ahead and with this binocular complex, you're going to set this interpupillary dial to the lowest setting. On this one, it ranges about 20. You're gonna go ahead and set it all, dial it all the way down till these two eyepieces are as close together as possible. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to set these diopters. There's a plus and a minus on them, and they go from a plus five all the way down to a negative eight, but you're gonna set both of those at that little hash mark between the plus and the minus, which is zero on both of them. The other thing you're going to do is you're gonna go ahead and dial these rubber eye cups out. So um, that's just to set this up initially. Here. All right, the lower part of the microscope there's a few things that you're going to make to, to uh, set up to. The first is the magnification changer. You want to set this at the lowest possible setting. On this microscope, it's a 0.4. So go ahead and dial that till you till that's there. And then the next thing you're gonna do, I'm gonna have you start with your objective lens length uh, starting at 250. So 250, that is 25 centimeters from your working distance here. Uh, or it's about 10, 10 inches. So if, you're, if your objective lens is a fixed lens and it does not have a vario, vario on it like this one does, then you're going to, whatever that fixed distance is, that's where you're going, your starting point is going to be. Once you get your diopters and your optics all set up correctly, then you can start to uh, adjust this focal length and, and your working distance. Another thing you wanna do is adjust your intensity of your light source to about me a medium level. So for me, I have five options here. I'm just gonna put it on the middle setting just so that it's not so bright as I'm setting this up. All right, so adjust your table to what would be a good working distance here. And then you wanna position the microscope in front of you you want so that your head is very passive and relaxed and upright in a very ergonomic position that's not putting any strain on the vertebrae. So I'm not going to be looking down like I would if I'm using loops. You're going to be looking straight ahead like this. Uh, these binoculars have an incline adjustment and I think it's like 180 degrees that you can adjust it. But you're actually, you want to set this so it's about 15, 20 degrees so that you're just looking almost just slightly down and forward as as you're looking into this. All right. Next thing you're going to do is you're gonna take a piece of paper and you're gonna set, you're gonna draw an X on it and you're gonna set that right in the middle of your operating field here. And as you look through the scope, you're going to see two circles and they're just kind of floating differently in there. And the goal of this is to bring those two circles so that they collide and make one circle. Uh, as I look through, I'm going to start to adjust this interpupillary distance dial until those two images collide and become one and the circle becomes the largest that it can be. So when I do this, I bring the images so that they become one and then I go a little bit beyond that so that I can see that I had the correct position. So go ahead and adjust that till you get, get one image and it becomes two again and then back dial until it's one image. 
if you do wear uh, glasses and the, your prescription is up to date, uh, then you would dial these eye cups all the way in so you have some space for your lenses and you would depend on that as your correction, corrective vision for what you're focusing on. For me, um, I do not have perfect vision and I am not going to wear glasses. So one reason that maybe you would wear glasses, especially now with some of our concerns uh, with PPE and asepsis and all of this with um, this COVID virus, would be that not, so every time that you leave the microscope, you're not having to take your glasses, or put your glasses back on. Uh, so if you depend on your glasses and you need to wear them when you're not working under the microscope, I would just go ahead and set it up with, with your eyeglasses for the microscope so that you don't have to make that change as you're going from in and out of your operating field. So for me, uh, I do depend on some correction. So I'm going to dial these diopters to fix that. And what you're going to do is you're going to, with them both at zero, you're going to close one eye and look only through the one eye and adjust it. And then you're gonna do the same for the other eye. So I'm gonna go back to where I was here and and get pretty close and focus there. And then what I'm going to do is close my left eye and look into the right and adjust it. And then I'm gonna close my right eye and then adjust the left one till that one's in focus. So what, what I have done is I have set my, my diopters for my needs of my, my eyes right now. So I do wear glasses. Um, I've got a little bit of presbyopia and so my eyesight is slightly off. And so I have my prescription from my eye doctor here. And you'll see on there, there's an OD and an OS. The OD is oculus dexter, and that is your right eye. And the OS is ocular sinister, and that's your left eye. So another option is that you can actually just look at these diopters and adjust these correctly. So this is, it looks like I have it correct here. This is a one on my left eye. And on my right eye, it's supposed to be a plus two five. And so you can also use that as a tool in setting this up as well. Um, and so now looking through, everything is clear here. And I'm just gonna check it by bumping up to the next magnification and making sure that it's still in focus. And I might even with that, just adjust the objective lens distance slightly to, to correct for any changes in the depth and then go back to your lowest magnification at 0.4. Yeah. So the reason I had you start with your magnification changer at 0.4 or the lowest setting for your microscope is that as we're setting up these eyepieces, it allows you to have the largest field of view and also the largest depth of field. And as you're setting up these, you're really, your goal is to not only get a single image that you're seeing, not two, but also set it up for your individual eyes. So that allows us to do that. Um, once you get this dialed in, as, we've, as we've walked you through, go ahead and record your settings and where your PD dial is and where your diopters are so that you can retrieve that and, and dial that back in if for some reason it gets changed or if you have more than one operator using the scope. The scope is almost set up for use, but not quite. Uh, the next video I will do parfocaling and that will allow you to go through the various magnifications and still get a crisp image. At, all, at high and low magnifications, because as we go to higher mag magnifications, that depth of field does shrink. And so we'll walk you through that in the next one, how to get there. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you.